Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, guys, we're back this week. Do y'all have any questions about the stuff we covered last week? I'm going to go over kind of all of that stuff again real quick. Uh, there was some stuff on the printing that, that I think that I should have covered, and I'm going to cover it now. Uh, most of you guys probably know it, but I'm going to go over it anyway. Uh, so we're, I mean, we're going to go through it pretty quick, and I'm going to kind of show you a bunch of the stuff, and then when we get caught up, then I'll slow down again, okay? But if you have any questions, just let me know, all right? Okay, how do we get into the lessons? Help. And I don't want the same person answering every... <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Hey, hey, Miss Helpy Helperton over here. Okay. Want exactly a lesson right. player? Help. Lesson player. Should look like this. Yours look like that. Everybody's look like this. Still. Still good. Okay. I'm sorry. You don't need the internet to get into. No. 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 Clint is telling me that my license. Oh, well, that's different. That's Mr. Hopkins. Mr. Hopkins. You know what? Text him. Text him and ask him because it may just be a code that you need to enter. Yeah, because it tells me at the end, after I get that message, it says enter code. Last time yeah. I had that problem, so and I had to call it, and they give you the code. They give you the code? Okay. Yeah, try that. Okay. I try calling. Oh. <laughs> well, they're not open. <laughs> Call Disney World. Okay, how do we how do we make it larger? How do we enlarge? Um, shift, control, F7. And decrease? F8. 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 Good. Okay. Um, you were able to watch the video mm -hmm. from last week? Okay. So we should be pretty close to caught up, guys. So we should be good. So one thing I'm going to show you guys is that you can be in the middle of a lesson. You can be in the middle of a lesson and print anywhere in that job. What's a print code? Alto. Alto. So you go to Alto when it brings this up, okay? Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. It's not just print, okay? So what you can do is you can print one, okay? And also you can come to setup. Are y'all in this? You can get any anywhere in the lesson, in the lesson. Okay? And do the print code, which is what? Alto. Alto. And come in here and then go to setup. Got it? Everybody there? And then drop this little window down right here, and it's going to give you all of your printers. So if you have a printer, fax machine, multiple printers, I have multiple printers. I have one at work, one at home. You know, see, so you're gonna have multiple printers and you're gonna need this. Cute PDF writer. Do y'all have that? Is that one of your options? I have it. Do I have it? Is that the same as print to PDF? Print to PDF is good. Uh, Cute PDF is just kinda, it, it's one of the forms of PDF, okay? So really what that does is it allows you to make a PDF file. Y'all know what a PDF file is? Everyone? Yeah? Well, I'm going to explain it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> a PDF file is something that it's your work. You can make it into a PDF file, send it to somebody else, and they can't get in it. All they can do is look at, is look at the work. They can't go in there and change anything, any of that stuff. And that would, that's what PDF allows you to do. So, you know, back in my day, you know, we printed everything. I mean, everything looked like this. You know, if you guys have never seen a transcript, I mean, this is what it looks like, okay? This was the day of old. 
Is it in there? Yeah. These were the old days. Okay. Now everybody wants you to email it to them, send it to them, or they get it like that. They don't have to send a runner down there. You know, they don't. The only thing that they're bringing a runner for is to bring that check <laughs> before you start that job. Okay, and we covered that last week. So if you watched every time before you start. Yeah, that. sure. <laughs> so I mean, you want to make sure. Okay, depending on if if you work court. If you don't, then it's going to be something different. But you know, time times are changing. I mean, even the fourth court on filing appeals is the same way. You don't file any paper. Everything is done electronically. So you're sending everything through the internet, through PDF files, okay? And that's how they want it now, all right? So that's one of your options. So if you don't have it, go onto the internet and Google <coughs> Cute PDF. Cute, C-U-T-E, PDF. It's gonna come up, it's free. Okay, and you want the writer, cute PDF writer. Okay, we don't have to do it right now. You can do it on your own time, whatever, but that's, this is some of the different properties that you have on print. So if you guys didn't know that, I'm kind of going over it like you don't know anything. Okay, so I'm gonna cover the basis for everything. I'm gonna try to cover it as simplistic as I can. Okay, and then when we get into the advanced mode, then you're going to see why. Okay? So that's one of them there. You have different properties that you can go into. You can do a normal. Uh, you can do different paper sizes, you know, whatever. The best way to go is fast draft. Okay? You're gonna get the maximum speed out of your printer on fast draft. If you go normal, and I don't know why, if it's just with Eclipse or what, guys, it prints about a page a minute. So you may have a printer that does, I mean, what are they now, 80, 100 a minute? It's ridiculous. I mean, the printers now, it just boom, 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 you know, whatever. It'll do about one page a minute on normal. For I, I don't know why, but you always want it on fast draft. Okay. All right. If you just put it on fast draft and then you get out, it didn't do anything. So you have to push okay for it to accept it. Okay. And you want it on fast draft. Got it? Got it. So coming back here, you can do a lot of things here too. You can do time codes. Do y'all know what time codes are? <coughs> time codes This is time codes. So you're not really gonna be able to see it, but right here, it has the time on it. So it has the time that you're going, all right? And you'll need that if you're doing uh, freelance work, okay? Because depositions are limited now. When I got out of school, a deposition could last weeks if they wanted it to, you know? And, ridiculous just going over the same stuff over and over but you're getting paid doesn't matter it's pages so it doesn't really matter you've already gone over the stuff you've heard it they're just saying different words I don't know whatever now they limited what you can do so the bar was the one who did it for attorneys limited and I think it's six hours per side so you only have six hours to get whatever information you want out of that witness and the court reporter is responsible for the time okay and that's why you kind of have time codes so when you get started and, and when you start and stop you have different things and we're going to get into it later but you have different things that you can do on your machine <clears throat> one of them is you know break break which for me is 
whereupon a short recess was had, or off, off, go off the record, whereupon went off the record. Lun, lun for me is lunch, whereupon a short recess was taken for lunch. These are gonna be parentheticals. I know what a parenthetical is? Open parentheses, has whatever, close parentheses, it's a parenthetical. So you don't want to pad the record with the parenthetical. Whereupon, uh, the attorney asked for lunch, and the other guy didn't want to go to lunch, but we still went to lunch. We went to McDonald's. I had the number one, Wada sized it, blah, blah, blah. Really? No. What you're going to do is keep it simple to the point, okay? All it's going to say is whereupon a lunch recess was had. So nothing more than one line, okay? The only time that you're going to have more than one line is when it's marking the exhibits. And I'll show you when we get there. We're not there yet, but I'm explaining to you, you know, kind of what these things are. So you have time codes. Uh, you can do a draft. You can come in here and change stuff too. This little thing is for your user settings. So you can come in here and change stuff. So it already goes to document where you need to be like on print stuff or whatever. Guys, unless you absolutely know what you're doing, don't mess with this. Okay? Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. All right? But you can go in there and change the font. You can change the numbered lines. Say you don't want it to have numbered lines. You just want it to have. See how it has the numbered lines? You see the numbered lines on the side where it has 1 to 25? I don't know if you guys can see it back in the back, but if, if you need to, you can come up. Um, when we get done and kind of look at it when I'm talking about the time codes, the page number, I mean the numbers on the lines, whatever. Okay, so you can change the font to, you know, kind of whatever you want. I mean, there's like 8,000 usually different fonts. You can change the size, font style, all of that stuff. I wouldn't mess with it too much, okay? But if you need to go into it, that's how you go into it, is into the user settings text box is this see how it has the box around it see how it has the box around it that's how you do that okay so you can change a lot of different things on here page link um, but like I said, don't mess with it too much, okay? One thing that's pretty neat is the pages that you can print, okay? Say you have an attorney that calls and said, you know what, Dave, I, I need that job. I need it, okay? Um, and it's 200 pages. Uh, you know, I'm working, working, working. I finally get 100 pages um, edited and it's like, you know what, I can't. I can't look at that computer screen another second or whatever. So I go, you know, have a sandwich, come back, and it's like, God, I still don't want to get on there. You know what, no big deal. Print that first 100 pages and start proofreading. If you want to do something different. So all you have to do right here is come in here, click it, and do one through 99. Let's just say you had 99. It wasn't quite the 100. It was only like three lines into the 100. But you don't want to print that other page. Or say it was only 99 pages. Okay. Then I want to do 1 through 99. So that's how you do it. 1 hyphen 99. Okay. And I'm telling you this for a reason. Because say you want to do, say you started, you went and sat in my old court. We started a trial in the morning and said, you know what? I mean, you guys are gonna take way too long. I've got other attorneys coming up. We're gonna hear some other cases. Y'all come on up. They come up, another case comes up, another case comes up. You know what, bring that case back. So now you're starting. It went through one through 99 in that morning session. Said, you know what, y'all come back after lunch. After lunch now, it starts at 165. So now it's 165 till 185, okay? Let's just say, for instance, it was that. So now you do comma, 165 
through 188. Let's say it was through 188, okay? So now it's gonna print one through 99, 165 through 88, and then he said, you know what? I've got one more case I need to hear. You, you guys step back. And then we're gonna go to the end until we finish. Okay, well, they picked up. So now it's comma, they picked up at 201, and now it's to the end. So now all you have to do is put the hyphen. And now the hyphen with nothing at the end tells it go to the end. You probably already knew that. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I, you know, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna show you, and that's just how you do it. So if you wanna separate pages within a job, you can, okay? And say, you know, let's just say for argument's sake, that the job started at 66 and it went through the end. Then you just do 66 to the end. This is only to proofread, okay? And you're gonna understand why once we get, once we get going, because I'm gonna show you how to, if you sat in my old court, how to go in there and it's like, you know what? We took 15 jobs that day, 15 different cases that day. I just need that one case. And it was 48 pages, okay? What is 66 to 14-ish, you know, to 100 and whatever, wherever it finished, okay? You're gonna go in there, mark it, copy it, go into another open job where you name it. Now you're gonna name it, okay? All of this is gonna start making sense in just a little bit. I'm, I'm saying some things that probably don't make sense, but you're gonna be able to name it. So where I was telling you, you know, where you name it the 103.16 or 17, remember that? Well now, it's the Longoria case. Well now you go in and put Longoria. Say it was Megan Longoria, Megan Longoria case. Now it's a spe specific case because you pull that case out of the day, you pulled it out of the day, now it's a specific case that you typed up, now it has a name to it. So you don't need to name it 103173 because it's the third file out of here, no. It's not the third file, okay? You only have two files, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, tell me, guys. So when you say like the morning file, not the file, so when you're taking all the cases in the morning, you're doing it all in one yeah. setting? Okay. All, in, all in one setting. And I'm gonna show you that in just a bit. That's a good question, though. That's, that's good, because I'm gonna show you what I did in just a bit on my own. This is my personal little SD card. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like, okay? So you can do that. So on the print mode, that's, that's what you do. So if it's 66 to 88, uh, you can do that. Then, comma, 109 to the end. Okay, so that's how you do it. So if you wanna do specific pages, that's how you do it. Any questions about that? Okay, got it? All right. We went over the toolbars, y'all remember that? Yes. Yeah? Yes. What was it? Alt-V. V? Alt-V? No. I like that though. I like that. Control shift one? But no. <laughs> hmm? Control shift one? Window. Windows. Oh, to custom here. So it has a speed key to it. Control shift three. Okay. Do you remember what that was? Control shift F3. It's a view toggle. So if you're on that, do that. F2. It says F3. Hey, hey. No, F2 no, will turn know. them all off. You want to teach the class now or what? You trying to change, <laughs> trying to change stuff on Eclipse or what? Jesus, lady. All right, so if you're in there, if you're in Eclipse, do it. Control Shift F3. Did it bring it up?
Did it bring this up? This is what it should look like. Remember? Huh? Control shift function F3 probably on yours. Yeah. Huh? In the clay. <laughs> when, when you put when you put attention, then that's what happens. So Fn Fn is the function, guys. Okay, and like I told you, and I don't guess y'all did that either. Google to see how to take the function off of your computer. Okay. It still didn't. No, I haven't done it, but I looked it up. Okay, <clears throat> look it up. Do it. If if not, then every time I say one of the F. Not the bad, the F like number, then you're gonna have to use the FN button. The FN button? The F. I can't even look at you right now. All right, so you're gonna have to use that function button, okay? So if it's not working like that, then try the FN button. That's what it looks like. Keep it simple, guys. Remember, you do what you want. I'm giving you information on what you should do. Keep it simple because the more, the more you put, the more toolbars you put, the less you see of your transcript, okay? And you can do it all with these. Between these and these, you should be able to do everything. Okay? And your, you know, magic keys and stuff like that, which is going to be the side little thing that we pulled up, which is the auto magic and the info bar. Okay? <coughs> so you want those. You want the info bar, you want the auto magic. All right? Auto magic. Any questions about toolbars? No? Read notes. I told you guys how you would do it if you go to a deposition, your computer crashes, you know? Don't get freaked out. Unless the attorney starts cussing at you or whatever, but because it was supposed to be a real-time depo or whatever, then it might be a problem. But if it wasn't, then it's no big deal. Shut your computer down. You have a writer. My writer is just like this, okay? But in the back, it has a little thing for the SD card. It has an SD card and then it has a backup for the SD card. So you have two backups, okay? Plus, if you're writing to your computer, now you have three, okay? That's what it looks like. Remember I was telling you the one that looked like this, that held like seven days? This one, holds a year and a half, so six hours average a day writing. That's wave files and everything. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how far they've come. And they, they make one that's 64, probably hold a decade. I, I don't even know. I mean, it, it's ridiculous, okay? I wouldn't recommend getting the 64 yet. So if you get out, the next couple of days <clears throat> don't get the 64 okay for some reason they were having problems with it or whatever the biggest that I would get is the 32 which is what I get okay and that's what it looks like okay so you go home you finish the deposition you go home this was the little thing that I was telling you about too okay it's just a little SD card reader and it reads the different sizes of SD cards whatever okay no big deal. Find the one that fits yours, slip it in there, ready to go. That's what it looks like right there. No big deal, okay? Put it in. Okay? And then how do you read in a job? Um, Alt-I. Alt-I. 
<coughs> so this is what it looks like when it comes up. It's kind of bare, you know, don't freak out. Oh my God, it didn't write the job. It did. All you have to do is come to source location. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. Remember I was telling you it just throws up some numbers and if you've never seen it before, which you haven't, you have it, you freak out. It's like, what? What, what is that? 2016-09. So September 09 of 2016. That's all it's telling you. I don't know why they did it that way. Hopefully to confuse you. And it kind of does in the beginning. But now that you know, that's what it is. So now it has the 2017, you know, whatever. So, I mean, you go to wherever. So you have an attorney that calls, says, Dave, I need that job from February of 2017. Okay, come over here, 2017. Okay, now it opens it up. So you see, And I have 64 files. Oh, it's reading the different files. So it has my WAVE files and all of that stuff. Yeah. It, for some reason, when you go into the lesson, it reads it that way. And if you want, I can show you, I, when you, when you hook it up to this projector thing, for some reason, my computer does different things. Okay, it doesn't usually do this. Okay, it reads it totally different. So what I usually have is 2217. Nine twenty two. And then I have 2217 1330. So what it does, it gives it to you in military time. Okay? So 1330 is what? 1.30. Okay, so that's all it is. We started at 9.22 that morning, and then we always come back at 1.30, and we do the afternoon docket. Okay, so if I do this, how am I going to read it in? What's it going to look like? <coughs> what am I going to name it when I go in? So say I come right here, I want this file. I read, what am I going to name it? 22172. Is this the second half of the day? Was it? Yeah, don't you well, usually do that? It was the morning one, right? Well, that's the second half. Oh, wow. Wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good because I thought that I had done this one. Nope. Hey, no, hey. Now you want to teach a class too? I mean, if you let me. Up with <laughs> Missy Mess over here. Y'all can <laughs> teach the class. Very good, though. Very good. So now it's 2 dash 2 dash. 17-2. Guys, you do it however you want. I don't really care how you do it. You can skip to Malou. I don't care what you call it, okay? I'm telling you how I do it, okay? You don't have to do it the same way. You don't. I keep it simple. And to me, this is simple. Now, if it's a little more simple for you to do it another way, do it however you want, okay? I'm giving you... I'm telling you what I do, okay? What I wouldn't do is turn off my machine every time there's a case. If you come and sit in my old court, because you're gonna have 15 cases for the morning and about 20 cases in the afternoon. So you're gonna have 35 different files for one day. Really? You know, I, I wouldn't do it that way. Now I did in the beginning and I learned the hard way and that's, what, that's the reason I'm telling you not to do it that way because I thought I was being Einstein. But you know what, I'll just, I'll mark it down on, you know, you get a, um, a docket every day, I'll mark it down, number one, number two, number three, so I already know where they are. You know, whatever, okay, well let's go. Well, that's okay. And so they go, okay, we want the Rendon case up. 
everybody starts coming, oh, judge, we're waiting on the caseworker. Uh, we're not going to be able to do the rendo. And you're writing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, then y'all step back. Martinez, come on up. Martinez comes up. Memoria comes up. Okay, bring Rendon back up. Here comes Rendon. So you now you mark it as number four or whatever. Okay, uh, Judge, now we're waiting on the supervisor. She was coming. What happened? I don't know. Y'all step back. Do three more cases. Now Rendon's coming up again. Now you've already made three different files for the same case that you've done nothing on so far. Okay? So this way you just make it into one big file and say you do it and you're, it, it's going to make a little more sense once we get into it. But now let's just say, okay, Rendon, come on up. We took an hour. So now you have 50 pages. You know what? Y'all are going to take too long. Step back. I need to do some other cases. Three more cases come up. You've got three other files. Now you go to the fifth file where you're doing Rendon again. Now you're ready to do Rendon. You go for another 60, 70 pages. You know what, step back. Y'all are gonna have to come back after lunch. We'll finish it after lunch. You do nine cases before we get to the end. It's like, all right, Rendon, we're gonna go from here on out. So now you're on number 10 for the afternoon. Now you have three different files for that case that you're gonna have to read in. Instead of doing a morning and an afternoon where it goes through and it reads the whole thing and you don't have to worry about it. It'll make a little more sense once we start getting into it, okay? Remember what I'm telling you right now about reading different cases in, keep it simple, okay? That's how you do it. Any questions about that? Pretty simple, no big deal. So how do you do it? How do you do it? How would you read a job in? From the beginning? All time. All time. Put in your SD card. Um, now you're gonna right. you're gonna put your SD card in first. Okay. So I mean, and some computers already have the SD card. Remember, it has a little SD slot. Mine has it. It doesn't read it right. So I had to buy this separate little thing. So if your computer doesn't do it, then you're gonna have to buy the separate little thing that attaches to the USB. Okay. Put in your SD card. Uh, all time. Select the job you want to open up. Highlight it, okay, and name. name it. Very good. That's that's it. That's it. The key to this is what? Alt I. Insert. I don't know why it wasn't Alt R for read, but it's Alt I for insert. Okay? So reading notes is Alt I. Got it? Okay. So now the job is in there. Now we want to translate it. How do we do that? Alt T. Alt T. Very good. So all T brings it up. Now you come in here, <clears throat> push notes, find the job you want, and it should be loaded with stuff. And really what it does is it brings up the last job that you read in there, okay? This is in the tutorial. This is in my tutorial, so that's why it's not reading my jobs, okay? So you go in there, and let's just say test one, five, 13, 13, was the job that you wanted to do. Select it, open it, now see what it did? So now it tells you that's the job you selected, the notes. Now it's gonna be named that in the text. So the text is the transcript or the body of the, is the body, okay? So that's what it is, okay, the text. So now you can do a lot of different things. And let's just say it was an Eagle Ford shell case, okay? And let's just say you're doing a, a huge case on this one and you named it Eagle Ford shell because it was a guy that got killed in the Eagle Ford shell and it's huge million dollar, multi-million dollar case. And you're just taking deposition over deposition over deposition and you're it's covering all the same stuff. Okay, and they're talking about fracking, and they're talking about uh, drilling, and they're talking about wastewater, and they're talking about all these uh, Halliburton, all these companies, specific names about stuff. Yeah. Do you want it in your dictionary, in your main dictionary? 
Maybe. Some of it, not really. I mean, when are you going to use fracking again? Well, when are you going to use... All the fracking time. <laughs> So now you have different dictionaries and you're going to understand, remember what I'm telling you right now, because this is going to make sense later. Okay. And, if, and we'll cover it again in the extensive part of the eclipse when we come back to translating notes. Okay. But you can go in here. What it's always going to do is when you put a job in, it's going to tell you the name of the job, what it's going to be named, and it's automatically going to put your main dictionary in there every time. You don't even have to ask it to do it. It does it. And you always want it in there. You want your main dictionary in there because is, the, and, at, all of those are already in there. Okay? You don't want to create a new dictionary every time you do a job. That's what your main dictionary is for, okay? So it's always gonna put your dictionary in there. But you come in here, and let's just say you have the Eagle Ford shell right here, or it's number seven. You have a medical dictionary, you have a slip and fall dictionary. I'm just making stuff up now. But number seven is your Eagle Ford shell. Come down here, select number seven, highlight it, okay. Well now in here it's gonna read that your main and the Eagle Ford shell. Because you want those terms in there because you use the same terms and it, you probably used the same briefs. Okay, so if you briefed it, which you should, you know, and say you're taking the deposition of Mr. Shashevsky. Trust me, you don't want to stroke that out every time. <laughs> okay? You don't. So let's just say you do Mr. Chef, S-H-E-F. Do you want that in your main dictionary? No. No. Because maybe tomorrow you have Mr. Sheffield come in. Do you want to stroke Mr. Sheffield every time? No. Just do Mr. <laughs> Chef. Keep it simple, guys. Keep it simple, okay? So certain things, and I'll, and, and I'll talk about it more when we go into dictionaries, but you don't wanna put certain things in your main dictionary, and I'm gonna talk about that a lot, okay? What to put in, what not to put in, okay? So when you don't put it in your main dictionary, you put it in a job dictionary, and that's what these little dictionaries are, are job dictionaries, okay? And let's just say you took court and you took the Arredondo case for five days, okay? Five different days you took this one case. Finally finishing it up. And maybe you took it today, you're not gonna take it again until Friday, then y'all are gonna take it again on Wednesday, and then the Friday after that, and then one other time in October because that was the only time that you had to finish it up. Okay, so he had to piece, piecemeal it, whatever. So now you have five different days where you're talking about the same thing. You're talking about the same, you know, now I'm gonna use it in terms of the old court that I used to sit in. It's a termination case where they're gonna terminate the parental rights of some parents, okay? So now you're talking about termination. You're talking about termination. You're talking about all the same names. It was Mr. Krzyzewski, Mr. Sheffield, Mr. Arnold and Mr. Hill. You have all of them. They sit in the same place every time they come. You have the same speaker, that's speaker one, that's speaker two, three, and four. They sit in the same place every time. Now you don't have to worry about it. You put it in this job dictionary, it automatically knows speaker one is Mr. Hill, speaker two is Mr. Sheffield, speaker three is Mr. Krzyzewski, and speaker four is Mr. Arnold every time. And let's just say these two cats over here keep flip-flopping every time they come. No big deal. She was three last time, he was four. Now they switch seats. He's still number four, but he's sitting over there. You just have to remember, and she's still number three. Keep it simple. So this way, when you read it in, it's automatically gonna read in. And when you do it, and when you go to put your real time in, it asks you sometimes for dictionaries. 
So you put the dictionary in of the, what did I say, Arredondo? You put the Arredondo dictionary in that you did the first day, now all of a sudden everything comes up. So when you're doing real time for your judge, speaker number one is Mr. Sheffield. No big deal. Now you look like a genius. Like, man, how do you do that? How do you already know? Is it that good? Because you were paying attention in Eclipse class. <laughs> that's what. So that's what translating does, okay? So you can do a lot of stuff in translating too. Remember, train and edit is what? Um, it allows you to edit while you translate. Very good. Yeah. Almost self-explanatory right there. Almost. Very good. Quick trend. Broad copy. <laughs> I'm looking at you. Oh, I thought you were just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a wondering eye. <laughs> what did you say? Is it Josh? Yeah. Okay. So, what did you say? Um, you have to wait for it to print, but it's faster than if you did the trend. Yeah. So if you need to know right then, it's just going to do it real quick and it's going to shoot it out. Trend and edit's going to take longer for it to get to the end to tell you how many pages it is, but it doesn't really matter because the guy already brought you a blank check or a check higher than you think the amount might be if you have to give them some money back <laughs> then you give them the money back all right <clears throat> so i mean whatever you need to do if you do it in real time or virtual real time it doesn't really matter okay got that you can even come down here see how it how it changed it now when i went in from the print mode and i went into the user settings it took me into document remember when you're in something and you go into the user settings, which is that little wheel, the little wheels, now it takes you to the place where you need to be. Okay? I never read it. Good trend. Yeah, it still takes you to the same thing. So I don't know if it would change it because of the real time, but I mean, you could change, you know, a lot of different things. Remember what I told you about user settings? What? Bingo. Bingo. Right there. You, you can miss the rest of the time you've got a name, bro. I'm just going to show up on the next week. So, it, it allows you to do so many different things. Be careful when you mess with these user settings, guys. Be careful. Okay? All right. But if you need to go in and change it, that's how you do it. Okay? Any questions about translating? No? All right. <laughs> okay, translation options. We didn't go over this. You were the only one that weren't here, so you know how to play the videos, right? Okay. I'll be. And it says here for a reason, because you need to be in there. So remember, you put your cursor anywhere in here, <laughs> right? In here, in the here. Put your cursor in the here, and then Alt V. Let's take a quick look at Total Eclipse translation options. You can get to the Translate Notes dialog by clicking on a toolbar icon, or opening the Production menu, or using the Speed key, Alt-T. Use the Notes button to select... Oh, it's just going to tell you the different options which is just what I went through. The dictionaries, changing different stuff. I think we should probably watch it anyway. Let's watch it anyway just to, just to see. Let's take a quick look at Total Eclipse translation options. You can get to the Translate Notes dialog by clicking on a toolbar icon, or opening the Production menu, or using the Speed key, Alt-T. Use the Notes button to select a steno file that you have already brought in from your writing machine. 
by default, the system will presume that you want the text file to have the same name. But you can certainly give your text file any name you want. There are two non-real-time translation modes. So for files that you've already written and brought into your computer, you could say that you want to edit while the translator works in the background. If you select Quick Tran, you will not be able to begin editing until your complete file has translated, but the system will be able to translate faster because the editor does not have to share the computer's processing power with the translator. After translation is finished, this statistics dialog will open. You can press the enter key to close the dialog and begin editing your document. Any questions about that? Kind of the stuff that I went over, I think I went into way more detail than they, they just gave, but whatever. Now we're gonna do real-time translation. There are several ways to start and stop real-time translation. If you prefer speak keys, you can use Alt-T to start and Shift-Alt-T to stop. But you can also use Instant Real-Time to start and you can also click on the close button of your translating window to stop. The Translate Notes dialog, which you can access through the speak key Alt-T, offers many options. Here you could select the dictionaries that you want to use just for this translation, or you could go to your user settings to make a selection of dictionaries that will be remembered. Here is where you would indicate that you want to use a master job dictionary for large cases. This is the subject of a separate presentation in the dictionaries section of visualizers. So you understand what I'm what I'm what he's saying? It was kind of what I was saying before. So you can go in there and say, I mean, like, like back when, you know, I was just out of school that, y'all remember the FinFin? Fin? Huge lawsuit, huge. I don't even know what FinFin, what it was covering. It was some medication that jacked some people up or whatever, but it was huge, huge. Million if not billion dollar case or whatever. So they had a bunch of these FinFin fin cases or whatever, and that's why he had it up there. But let's just say that you're taking for a large case. See, so they had it right here. So you can go in there and let's just say you're taking the deposition in that FinFin fin case and all you have to do is go in there, select that dictionary, and it automatically brings up the briefs or terms that you were using for that job. <coughs> okay? This, this is the subject of a separate presentation in the dictionaries section of visualizers. In this example, you see I'm setting up for real-time translation, and I want to record an audio file that will be synchronized with my real-time text. When I press the OK button, I'll be asked to give the file a name. With real-time translation, I can see and edit what I'm writing. So this is what I was talking to you about, that status bar that you can open up in your user settings. Actually, I think it might have been in the Windows and the windows pop up with the uh, view toggles, and it'll tell you this. It'll tell you how many entries you have, it'll tell you how many untranslates and the percentage you have, the conflicts you have and the percentage, and all selected, and then if you see this little thing going, y'all paying attention? You see this little thing jumping, then you know that it's recording. If you don't see that thing moving, the audio, it's not recording. Also, this WPM, words per minute. It also tells you how fast you're writing, okay? So it's actually a pretty neat little thing. Readback is much easier, plus I can be recording a synchronized audio file to accompany my transcription. I'm also displaying the real-time statistics dialog. Not only does it include an audio level indicator to let me know if I'm getting a good sound recording, it includes a speedometer showing me the number of words per minute that I'm currently writing you see where it says 125 this thing is jumping so it's recording okay mm -hmm. and the number of words per minute that I've been writing since translation began any questions about that pretty simple basic 
no big deal. That's the introduction to Eclipse, okay? It just kind of gave you the basics of uh, printing, inputting a job, translating a job, and doing a job in real time, okay? Any questions about that? No? Very good. All right, help, lesson, hyperkeys. Guys, if you haven't been paying attention, pay attention now. These are really important. Okay, hyperkeys is really important. Okay. So what you want to do, the way that you turn off and on hyperkeys is through Alt Z. Write that down. That's going to be extremely important. So important that after a while, you're not going to need that because you're going to use it so much. <laughs> you're going to know this one. Okay, Alt Z turns on and off hyper keys, okay? And in hyper keys also turns it off. So N is like an insert. So that's why they use the letter N. So remember when I told you, and they're gonna cover it here, but when you're in hyper keys, when you're not in hyper keys, the letters are just the letters. So you type and it types and it does what it's supposed to. In hyper keys, listen. In hyper keys, letters mean functions, not letters anymore. Okay? So now you're going to be able to delete, shave, cap, mark, find, delete, all different kind of. Um, search for and untranslate, all through letters on the keyboard. So it takes on a different function, not letter, okay? That'll make sense here in just a bit. So each time you move the cursor, Eclipse analyzes the context of the auto magic and offers you the top editing choices. So that's what I was telling you about having the uh, info the information bar, that's what this is. So it gives you information on what you do. So if you're on a word, then it's gonna give you the options of that word. If you're somewhere else and you're like in colloquy or something else, now it's gonna give you options of different things. Do you need a byline there? Do you need to modify, modify a paragraph? Continuation of dashes, global type text, insert a paragraph, delete a word. You can do a lot of things, okay? And it's going to make sense in just a bit, but that's what this is called, okay? Auto magic, because it, it automatically, the more you use this software, the more it knows what you're doing, okay? Not what everybody does, what you do, what you're doing, okay? So don't use it as a glorified typewriter. Use the software as much as you can when you can now there's times that you're not going to be able to use it and don't use it okay those times are going to be very small but there's going to be times that you just need to insert stuff and that's okay and you're going to use it as a typewriter type in what you need to and then you go back into hyper keys and just start editing and doing whatever you need to do okay but there's certain times that you're going to need to do that okay but they should be pretty small And just like it says right here, most of the time you'll simply be able to press the number for the choice that you need. So say you need a continuation of dashes or you need to global something, you can press G or you can just press four. So four is gonna tell you, four is the command for it. G is the hotkey for it. So that's the quick way of doing it. So. Like if you're just editing and you don't need to look over and it only takes a second, but second 
seconds, 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 add into minutes, minutes, add into hours after a while if you're doing a huge job and you're saving yourself a lot of time. Once you get to know what these hotkeys and speed keys are, okay? Now you don't have to look over there, you automatically do it and you're just going, okay? So we're gonna do automagic overview. Here's an overview of how Automagic works. Automagic makes using Eclipse as easy as one, two, three. When you turn on Eclipse, press one to reopen the last job you were editing. Each time you move your cursor, you'll probably... That's one pretty neat little thing of this software too. As I say, you're like, oh my God, the kids got home from school. I gotta stop editing this job. I just shut it down. So get out, shut it down, get to the main screen, not the Eclipse screen, but just get completely out of Eclipse, okay? Just so that the kids get on, they don't get in your job and just start typing all kinds of crazy stuff. And then it's like, oh, I was in hyper keys and they're typing all this stuff and it did all of this deleted stuff and added endings and, and they're like, wow, well, we didn't know. Well, get out of the job, no big deal. So when you go back in to the job, the first, usually the first one is always going to give you the last job that you did. That's going to be option one on your main screen. Okay. Now, if you just shut down the computer, oh, somebody come and shut down the computer and you can do that too. You don't have kids, nobody else messing with that computer. None of that stuff, you trust it, just shut it. It's in rest mode, you're good to go. Go have a sandwich, you know, whatever. You know what, I gotta get back, I gotta, I gotta get to that job. Open it up, come back here, or it's gonna open it right where it left off in that job. But if you didn't and you got out of the job, exit it out, no big deal. It's gonna open up, you press one, automatically goes to the job and it goes to the last place you were editing. Make sense? Got it? It's pretty cool. Editing. Each time you move your cursor, you'll probably find the choice you need is at the top of the list from 1 to 10. Automagic is also a great teacher. Wherever there's a menu item, you'll see the icon display. So that's what it's going to do too. So if you want to have the 168 icons up there, Help yourself, okay? So when you're editing and it's like that big right here, because you got 149 icons up there, let me know how that works out for you. Probably not well. Keep it simple because you can do all of this stuff over here anyway, okay? So it's gonna give you those options over here anyway. So it's gonna tell you if, if you have it open, it's gonna give you the icon that it would be if you had the other six lines of icons open, okay? You don't need it. You don't need it because you have number five and you have shift R that tells you to reverse the words. That's a pretty neat little thing right there too. You'll also see the hyper keys and speed keys that are editing shortcuts. But if you don't need to see these, you can hide them. Here a steno notes file is open. Pressing seven gives you a translation preview. That's not a new feature. So if you have this open, what, regardless of what you're in, it's always gonna give you options of what you can do. So it doesn't matter. You can be in reading notes and it's gonna give you options. What do you wanna do? Do you wanna pin the note file, which is reread the note file, read it again because you added maybe a dictionary in, so you wanna reread it? Do you want to go to a page, a certain page or whatever, you want to print the notes. I don't know why, maybe, I don't know. You want to block part, export a file, add strokes manually, translation mode. So it's always going to give you, no matter where you are, if you're in a job, not in a job, it's always going to give you options of well, what do you want to do. So as soon as you get in there, it's thinking for you. Okay, well, what do you want to do? It's that little dog that's right there, you know, nipping. It's always, what do you want to do? What, what, what were you thinking here? What, what did you want to do? It's that, it's that, but it's good. It's, you know, it's not the dog you have to smack, it's, it's a good dog, you know? But it's always thinking ahead. 
It's thinking way ahead, way further than you are, okay? And maybe you don't need any of that stuff. Maybe, you know, I just want to check the notes. No big deal. But if you want to do stuff, it's going to give you those options. But AutoMagic makes it really easy to use. In a new dictionary, just press 1 to build from a word list, or 2 to add entries from your computer keyboard. So you can do that anytime. Are y'all in? Do it. Do control D. <clears throat> Did it bring up? Did it bring up a... It should look like... Let me see if I can minimize this and bring it up. It's going to look like this. <clears throat> it should look like that. So let's just say you're watching the news and you hear Eagle Ford Shell. Well, like a tonto. I thought it was Eagle Ford Shell. S-H-E-L-L. -E -L. How many of y'all know that it's not that? Y'all know what it is? Oh, yeah. No? Nope. You? Hmm? Mm -hmm. What is it? Uh, that the energy company, S-H-A-L-E. A-L-E. A-L-E. I've read it, so. Yeah. You don't know, and people say it so fast, it's Eagle Ford Shell. <clears throat> and that's the way they say it. So that's what I wrote. <laughs> you know, as court reporters, that's what we're taught to write. I mean, so I wrote Eagle Ford Shell, you know, the whole time. So let's just say you heard Eagle Ford Shell. And it's like, man, I, I want to write that because, you know, maybe you got the notice to go take a deposition tomorrow and it's covering some stuff on the Eagle Ford shell. Man, I thought it was shell, like a conch, like a, you know, <laughs> no, no, it's not. Okay. So you want to go in here and you can, and you can do however you would do Eagle, which to me would be long E, long e G. G. And then you come up here and go next stroke, L. I'm old school, guys. One, I'll tell you a little story. <clears throat> if people tell you you can't get out of school because you stroke everything out, I'm living proof. I stroked everything out except the basics. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, beyond a reasonable doubt, preponderance of the evidence, those are the only ones I used. So if they tell you you can't get out of school, oh, you better use briefs and you better brief it up. You know what? If you get briefs, great. If you get them, the whole thing about briefs is they're supposed to make it brief. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, it shouldn't be, oh, there's a, there's a brief for that. Where's, and that guy is still talking. You're dropping words left and right to get one word. It's not a brief anymore, you know? Now it's a WTH. <laughs> like, what the heck are you doing? You know? Briefs make it brief. If you don't get the brief, don't use the brief. Or if it's a good brief, practice it. Practice it. Get your boyfriend, get your girlfriend, get your wife, husband, kids, and you do little flashcards. And let's just say it was beyond a reasonable doubt. YRD. Man, that's a good one. But the other day I was sitting there trying to think, man, I've got to breathe. And I missed 15 words trying to think of one. That'll happen once, okay? So now you just do it, write it on a little thing. The beyond a reasonable doubt. At beyond a reasonable doubt. To beyond a reason. And it doesn't need to make sense. You just need to hear it and have your kids read it. Uh, then mom, this doesn't make sense. Just read it. You never make sense and yeah, I listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just read it. You don't know everything. <laughs> Practice the brief to where it becomes a brief. Okay? That's the whole point of briefs. So that's why I'm showing you this right now. Because if you, you know, let's just say you need to, you know, put that brief in. This is how you do it. Okay? And then when you're done, and you can even move these little things around. So you put it right here. Left click. Hold down on it and just drag it. Y'all know how to do that? Y'all know how to do that, right? So you can move these things anywhere you want. 
And if you come right here, you can go into customize and you can put it to where it always comes up in the middle. It doesn't come up here and here or wherever it always comes up. So you can customize it to wherever you want to. Okay. And now you finished it. Okay. So now it's going to tell you, what do you want to define it as? Well, does Eagle always come up capitalized? No, no. If they're talking about, Hey, there, it was an Eagle. It's not capitalized. So you just put it in there small. This is going to come different. I'm, I'm a little bit ahead, but pay attention because when you go and global something, which is when you write something in steno and it's not in your dictionary and you want to global it, which is put it in English now and put it in your dictionary. This is what it's doing. This is my steno for it. That's the English for it. And that's going to tell you it's going to go in your main job dictionary. Guys, unless you tell it to do something else, it's always going to put it in your main dictionary. So be careful when you're putting stuff in there. Oh, well, I need it for Eagle Ford Shell. And that's a proper name, so I'm going to capitalize Eagle. Well, guess what? You just put it in your main dictionary. The Eagle is going to come up capitalized every time. Where you can come up with a brief for Eagle Ford Shell as in, you can do long E-G-S, E's. I don't know, that, it makes sense to me. It may not to you. It may go, maybe Gale may, means, makes more sense to you. For Eagle Ford, the G and Eagle, and then Shell, Gale. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Yeah. So you're trying to think of a brief for this thing. You don't want to stroke out Eagle Ford Shell every time if they're going to be talking about Eagle Ford Shell 849 times in this one deposition and you've got 400 more depositions coming. Trust me. You can do, keep it simple, EGS, eggs, and you put it into a job dictionary. Now, if somebody says, well, I'll have the bacon and eggs. It doesn't come up well. I'll have the Eagle Ford shell. <laughs> See where it's going to get confusing? Yes. So yeah. you want to be careful if it goes into a job dictionary or a main dictionary. Be very careful with that. <laughs> okay? So that's what you do. And you can even come here, and I'm, I'm getting way ahead, but you can even come to this different spellings. I don't know how to spell Eagle. Is it two E's? G L E? I don't know. All you do is press spelling and it gives you the different things of what it thinks that you're trying to do. You know what? I wanted Agile. Press number two. Hit OK. It puts it in there. So now it's still telling you, is that what you want? Are you sure? Because now it's going to go in your main. Are you sure that's what you want that to be? No, I want an eagle. Oh, I forgot. I pressed the wrong number. No big deal. You can either come in here, backspace, put eagle, or just go into the spelling again, and it's going to give you that option. You press that number, and it automatically goes in there. So did you see what I did on the spelling? So say it's argot. All you do is press 9, and that's all you do, and it automatically puts it in there. You don't have to spell it again. You don't have to, whatever, oh, it was A-R-G-H, just go in there, press a number, that's all it does, and it puts it in there. Simple, okay? Here's an overview of how Auto M2 unfilter the display. Globaling is a good example. Entries. Pressing 1 here would just press 1 to build from a word list, or 2 to add entries from your computer keyboard. AutoMagic adds great shortcuts to find entries. Pressing 1 here would filter the display to show just capital O. So you can go in there, and they're just kind of showing you what it, what you know, the different options are. We're going to get into it more in depth. But if you go into find entries, you can find all kinds of stuff. 
guys, my dictionary is about 90 something or 100,000 entries. Ridiculous. You know what? I want to find every word that has ED, whether it starts with D. Really? No. All you have to do is come in here, come to special entries, and you can find whatever you want. Say you want to deal with numbers. And it doesn't matter whether you wrote it out or use a number bar, it's gonna have it in numbers. And you're gonna see how important that is in numbers when we get to numbers, okay? It's important, it really is. But, but you can go in there and fix anything. Prefixes, suffixes, phrases, conflicts, whatever, okay? You can go in there and fix anything. So you can, you can hone it in to what you need it to, okay? Eyes entries. And now press one again to unfilter the display. Globaling is a good example. With Global Magic, Eclipse users can simply mark notes and then pick a choice off a list. You see what it's doing right there? So what they did was, this is supposed to be, I had arthroscopic surgery. So that's arthroscopic surgery. Are you going to stroke that out every time if they're talking about a knee replacement and they did an arthroscopic surgery? Mm -hmm. Let me know how that works out when your hand falls off after they've said arthroscopic <laughs> about, I don't know, 84 <laughs> times. Not very well, okay? Smarter, not harder, okay? So they're talking about arthroscopic surgery, okay? So the first time you hear it, you're going to stroke it out the first time because you, don't, you want to keep going. Unless you're smart enough to think of things on the fly, and I think it's just second nature. I do it now. You know, when I hear something crazy, I'll stroke it out the first time and I'm already thinking, they're gonna say that again, what am I gonna use? Art, art. I don't know, that's the thing that came to me. Maybe for you it's throat, throat. I don't know. Whatever is easy. You don't want something where you're using all 10 of your fingers every time you have to, you know, seriously? Mm -hmm. You gotta think about it that much. Man, it's not really a good brief. Keep it simple. You know, like Krzyzewski, I wouldn't think S-H-A-E-O-I-R-K-L-G, elemental P, really? No, chef, chef, to me. So I'm thinking of something quick, easy, the fewest amount of letters possible, okay? but that doesn't conflict with something else, okay? So if, if you're talking about somebody who went to a restaurant and had bacon and eggs before he got killed at the Eagle Ford Shell, mm -hmm. and you're using eggs, eggs as Eagle Ford Shell, and they start talking about, well, what did he have for breakfast? Well, he went and he had eggs, and you know they were talking about these eggs, and were they farm-raised eggs, or were they, you know, I don't know, they were eggs and eggs. So now it's coming up Eagle Ford Shell every time because you use the same brief. Be careful when you're using certain briefs on certain jobs, okay, that you don't use the same one, okay? And there's always ways to change it up too. You know, if you want to use the EGS for the Eagle Ford Shell, well, he had eggs. Egg, come back S. So it's still gonna come up egg, and then you just add the S, changes it totally up. Because you use two different strokes for the same thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's always ways of changing it up, just a little bit. And I'll give you another example about, I use doing DOG. Because we rarely talk about dogs in the court. Now when they talk about dogs, I use DOG with an asterisk. So the asterisk, if you use a lot of, um, if you use a lot of briefs, is gonna become your best friend. That asterisk you're gonna use a lot with a lot of different words or whatever to change stuff up. I'm always thinking about the thing that I'm using the most. We, I write doing every day, I guarantee it, at least once every day. Dog, I probably hadn't written dog in about six months maybe eight months. So you see where I'm going with this? Even though that is the way that you would type out dog, D-O-G, on your machine, I hear doing a lot more. 
So use the one that you hear the most and then add the asterisk with the other one. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. You can still use the very efficient globaling dialog to play mark notes and then pick. Okay, now, so when you, the good thing about this software is like when you mark something, it's already, it's already guessing what you're trying to do. What do you want? Uh, I don't even know what that is. Urethroscopic? Urethroscopic. Urethroscopic. Or do you want arthroscopic? So it's going to give you options on the bottom or it's going to give them to you here. And it's going to be it's going to be important in just a second when they explain this because once you define it it already knows what you're doing. Once you define it once, it kind of knows what you're doing. Remember what I just said cuz it's going to make sense in just a second. But it's already thinking about what you're doing. So now all you have to do you don't have to go through and uh, let me pull out my dictionary, my handy little dictionary, and how do you spell arthroscopic? You don't have to, guys. You don't have to. They just did it for you. All you have to do is select one, and it puts arthroscopic right there. Okay? You want it in your main dictionary? Yeah, I would. You're probably going to hear arthroscopic again. You know, and you're. Is that going to coincide with anything else? Wow. I wouldn't think so. So it's probably a pretty good brief, okay? Or a good stroke, stroke for your dictionary. Make a choice off a list. You can still use the very efficient globaling dialog, but it's even easier to pick choices from the... So what they're doing is, it's gonna come here, and let's say you haven't defined it yet. But it's like, you know what, I'm going, going, and I look up here and it says, man, orthoscopic. Pay attention, right here. What this is telling you is that one, it's the third thing that it read. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna read the first stroke, R, A-R. What did you mean, R-A? Did you mean A-R? Or did you mean arthroscopic? Because now it's reading down, it doesn't have anything else that it could really do with A-R. And you know where they're, how they're getting the R-A and A-R? is if you stacked, I don't use A-R-E for, it's my initial R, but I don't know, some, uh, some of the other, uh, writings, not Stin Ed, you know, some of the other one, Philadelphia Clinic or whatever, maybe they teach you to write with the ending R, I don't. Okay, so it's not, it may not come up with mine, but maybe it does because it says, you know what, maybe you were trying to put it together and you stacked it together for a reason because you want to do RA or AR. Okay, no big deal. So that's the only ones that it has for that. So now it starts going down through the word to figure out what you're trying to stroke. Well, you know what, it came up with it. And what it tells you right here is that it's the third thing, arthroscopic. And that little four means that it was four strokes. That's all that means right there. As it's telling you, it's putting those four strokes together. So it's like, well, how did they get that out of that? That's how. So if that's not what you meant to write, then, or you meant to write away, because it was this and I don't know, maybe it was close, but it, you meant to write away then no big deal. You type in number six, and it puts away. But you meant to write arthroscopic, so all you do is push three. Or if it's a good, clean stroke, now you global it and put it in your dictionary because you're probably going to hear it again. Okay? So now it's going to start coming up. Auto magic list. To make this four stroke steno global, all I have to do is press three, and now press a number if I want this global to go into a dictionary or affect the rest of the document. Otherwise, just keep moving the cursor. So global replacements typically take only one or two steps. So you see what it's doing there? Garage. Well, did you mean gay? 
Did you mean good something else? I don't know what the option was. So global replacements typically take. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Did you did you mean good right here? Gave, you know whatever. So it's it's thinking ahead of you. What do what you mean to do there? We think you meant garage, but that's putting these two strokes together, and that's what it's telling you right there. We put those two strokes together, and we got garage. Is that what you meant? If so, just push number three, and that's what it's doing. It's thinking ahead. Only one or two steps, and no typing. Automagic understands paragraphing. Again, just press a number to do with one step what might take multiple steps on another program. Automagic also watches out for word reversals. This one's actually kind of neat. I think they're probably going to go into it a little bit more. Shift R. Let's write that down. steps on another program automatic so see how it is she is still works there and it's a question does that make sense to you no it's is she is she still works there well they're gonna fix works into working either. too huh? <laughs> do what well they're gonna fix works into working too is she still working Could there? Be. You know, maybe you put the wrong ending or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. It, not that it really needs to make sense, but say it's supposed to be, is she? No big deal. Now you don't have to delete this word. Come over here, press in, type in the word. All you do is shift R and it toggles the word. Okay. Shifts it. Okay? Shift R is good. It's good. Especially if you stack. If, if you have a habit of stacking, like is the, the, um, at the, you know, diff different words that you stack, it might, it'll be good. Because all you have to do is just reverse it, shift R. It also watches out for word reversals or incorrectly applied suffixes. Incorrectly su suffixes. That's in a totally different thing. But all you, you don't have to go in there, come over here, backspace to delete it, press in, ing. You don't have to do that. All it is is W now. W in hyper keys gives you word endings. So if you're in now, press Alt Z. And you should have a fat cursor. Okay, the regular cursor is real skinny. It should be thicker. Do you have that? Huh? Oh, you don't even have one. Oh. Shh, we're recording. Still, yeah. If you want to teach a class, I'm going to have that. Y'all have it? Where it's thicker? Okay. Press W. That should come up. Does it? Just W? Yeah. Well, not in the <laughs> Got it? It has to be in the body. It can't be at the beginning, like up here or whatever. It has to be in the body. <laughs> oh, like you don't have to poke me with that thing. <laughs> Move it over and put it on require. Put it in, inside one of the words. Like, okay, one of the words. All right. Press W. Press D. Wait. See what it is. Click and drag it. Hold on to it and drag it down. You see it's requiring, right? Push D. So now, push Z. Z. <laughs> you see how I put it back? Oh, yeah. So Z is also the place. <laughs> Oh, it already took it. Okay. See, I'll put it back to you. 
So Z, and I'm kind of getting ahead too, is it also does the books. So what it does is it corrects what you just did, okay? Z, okay? But I'm getting a little bit of it ahead, but I mean, that's the way you do it. Did y'all do it? How about you? Anyway, so that, that's how you do it. So you can, you can do, look at all of these things, guys. Able, ably, est, ers, ings, all of these, and you can change them. Kind of like the user settings. Be careful, okay? <laughs> Be careful when you go in here and start changing because it coincides with the letter that you're trying to do. And they try to put the letter E, E, S, T, D, E, D. You see where they're going with that? So the letter tries to coincide as, as close as it can with what you need it to do. So you don't want to go in there and start changing all this stuff. And now you have S. It's not S. It's M, E, N, T. Really? No. You can, I mean, if, if you think you're gonna remember that, help yourself. Keep it simple, simple, okay? But you're gonna like that one a lot on the word endings. So it's prefixes and suffixes. This little carrot, that's what that's called, is what tells you whether it's a prefix or a suffix. So if it's the carrot, then the word, it's a suffix. If it's the word, then the carrot, then it's a prefix. I'm trying to see. X right there is a prefix. You see how it has EX caret? So the caret is what puts it together. Okay? So it's going to put it together whichever way the caret is. Okay? Make sense? Or missing punctuation and compound word problems. They're, Naturally, they're, it alerts you to spelling problems. And they're going to cover it more too, but you can even do punctuation in hyperkeys. So let's say you need right here. Just get somewhere in the body of the text. Get on the beginning of the word. Just kind of arrow over. Yeah. Get on top. have it automatically it automatically puts it there so get onto a word and then it has words in front and in back of it get on the beginning of the word and then do a period see how it did the period space space cap it does it for you guys you don't have to do it anymore okay on punctuation all of that stuff Okay, so when you, when you do the period, it's going to put the period. So what it's going to do is it's always going to put the punctuation in back, not forward. So if you need it forward, then you need to get on the next word. So it's always going to put it in back. So if you need the period right here, and then this is a so totally separate sentence, you can't come right here and push period because it's going to put a period right there before working. So if you need it right here on the G and then make this another sentence, then it has to be on the O, on on. Make sense? Got it? All right. As you're making them, it also helps with number formatting and hyphenation without requiring that your cursor. And see what it does, and it'll, I'm, it'll explain it more later, but when you come to numbers, any number, 30, third, any of that it's always going to give you the options in numbers roman numerals time date money it's always thinking way ahead of you on numbers on everything it's always thinking ahead okay so it's, it's pretty neat and the more you use it the more it remembers what you're doing so when it comes up to the thing, the thing that you use the most is now going to start moving to the top. 
okay? So the more you start using it, the more it's gonna remember what you're doing. Part of a number. Automagic is not just one feature, it's a synthesis of years of innovation, including global magic and translation magic. Total Eclipse, brilliantly simple, simply brilliant. Couldn't have said it better. Brilliantly simple, keep it simple, but simply brilliant, and it is. I mean, they try to keep it really simple, but really good stuff to use. Okay, got it? Okay. I think we're gonna stop right there. Hyper Keys is way involved, way, way involved, and they'll probably take the whole class on Monday. So I'm gonna wait and do the Hyper Keys. Go over what we did today. Guys, the stuff that I taught you that wouldn't, we didn't even probably weren't supposed to learn today, word endings, which is what? Word endings, prefix, suffix is what? What hyper key? W. 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 Write that down. Practice that this weekend. Practice it. It's just gonna come easier for you on your editing and stuff like that. Use that. Okay? Um, I think that's really all that you can kind of use that we've gone over. Once we get into Monday, it's gonna really open up. This is gonna open up because you're gonna learn how to do a lot of things come Monday in Hyper Keys, okay? I just don't, I don't wanna overwhelm you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm usually gonna run class that way. I'm gonna run it to where we get to a point where I don't wanna overload you with stuff. So use the stuff that I taught you those next days or next couple of days until we come back and then I'm gonna teach you new stuff. So the more that you're using it, the more you become familiar with it, the easier it's gonna become, okay? What's print? How do you get into hyper keys? Alt-Z. Alt-Z. Insert notes. Translate notes. Alt-T. Yeah. Any questions about what we covered? No? Okay, we'll see y'all on Monday. We'll turn it off, please.